<laughs> Thank you very much, Cordell, for this uh, warm introduction and for the invitation. I'm so happy to connect with everyone today, even on the virtual world. We can actually tune in from all over the world and spend some time together learning from each other. Um, I'm doing different kind of work for women. Empowerment is one of my passion and I'm fond of independent women. Uh, that basically my passion to see women rising, see women really learn how to support and collaborate each other. But I guess today we're talking about this, about how to unleash your inner champion, whether it's uh, in business, whether it's in life in general. There are some basic principles that I draw parallel between uh, being a professional athlete in the background and becoming a world champion, as well as leading the business or in life in general, whether it's relationships or whether it's your building the family and like in general. So I think to talk every single principle, it will take forever because here are actually 11 principles. You can read it if you want. But today I want really to share, and maybe Cordella, if you have, do you hear me by the way? Because I don't know, somebody is renovating something here. <laughs> so just maybe show the thumb if you hear me. <laughs> I'm not sure, okay, awesome. So maybe you can also guide what exactly you want uh, me to talk about, whether it's more business related things or what exactly but i also made some point for myself to mention and i think i will touch three uh basic things and principles to uh like put your attention on so number one is realize that everything what you have in life whether it's your past present or the future it's in your mind it's in your heart as in, in it's in your hands meaning talking about the mind it's all about your mindset of course responsibilities so basically accepting your past knowing that it's your responsibility to create your future and when you do this now present the fact that we are all here today it has a meaning it has a purpose and that you are investing time in yourself that tells a lot about you, that you really want to have something more in life. Talking about heart, it's all about vision, it's all about passion, it's kind of inner fuel that every single of us has. And when we talk about unleash your inner champion, of course, I'm not talking about like athletes and um, like champions in sport, not only. It's a champion or some people call it potential inner gifts something that we are giving given already we just need to use some tools in order to unleash it to use this potential otherwise why do we leave right so talking about hands it's basically ability to take actions it's uh you know um we have even nowadays in nowadays reality that we live right crisis but also personal crisis or personal hardships whatever is coming in life we all face this because sometimes especially women we are not really like to share what is going on in our life we like to look like we are successful we are great uh, but what is going on behind the scenes of course we are facing different kinds of challenges and obstacles. But the action part is despite of the fears, despite of these hardships, despite what is going on in your life, you take this make this decision to take the next action to achieve what you want in your life. So I actually shared the formula in the book. Maybe I will show you. <laughs> I didn't prepare the slide, but here it is. This is a very simple formula. I don't know if you see. The formula of success is basically law of attraction. You know, everybody, I hope about the law of attraction, about the amazing ability of women. And I, I, I think you heard that women are much more powerful than men. 
And sometimes people say, how it come? Men are so strong. We can't be stronger. But the strength is about the energy. Women, in reality, 16 times much more powerful than men energetically, meaning we are more intuitive, meaning that we can manifest in our life no matter, like whatever we really want. But if just sitting, I know you, you heard about the like uh, vision boards, about uh, manifestation processes, but if just sitting on the chair or on sofa, it doesn't bring you further, right? So it's all about the law of action. I call it law of action. When you actually decide to go for your dream, that is basically multiplied to law of reaction or law of reflection. What does it mean? Uh, there are many ways and many paths how you can achieve what you want. For example, in business, if you target the goal, your financial desired income stream, there are many paths how you can achieve it. And some people make a short short, short, shortcuts, right? That is not always great things to go. That is always attract, we call it karma, right? So I'm talking today a lot about material things, but also spiritual. It's a mix of things. So if you really believe in this love, a reflection is all about the accumulated karma. That's why this formula contains and love, attraction it's our natural ability plus the law of action it's what we actually have to do in this material world that is multiplied to law of reflection basically what with our action we create in the future is it great thing or is it we just choose to have such kind of short-term pleasure but with very not always nice outcomes in the future for ourselves and our families. So this is the basic formula of my success. Um, I mean, success for everything. Uh, given an example, I, one of my biggest passion is ballroom dancing. And, uh, you know, to become a champion in ballroom dancing, meaning that you have to stand out among hundreds and hundreds of thousands of couples and uh, life happens and there was time when I, as Cardella mentioned I was working in the bank but I never really liked and enjoyed to have a boss enjoyed uh, working in the bank but even though I was working in the department of international relations it's pretty you know great position with a great potential but I really hated every day of my work and uh, I always wanted to have something Owen. I already had a vision. And at that time I decided to open my first business. It was just after graduation. Uh, it was a dancing school. So where to accumulate, like gather the capital, raise the capital. I went to my dad and first time in my life, my dad said, no way, just, you know, go work, get experience, minimum two years, and then we talk. And just as a background, I was born in a traditional Asian family, not super conservative, but anyway, if you are born um, as a woman in Asian family, sometimes it means that there are already so many restrictions put on you as a woman. You are not allowed maybe to do this. You have to ask permission for that you are perceived to create the image of a great family. So there are a lot of things like I was restricted on, like I wanted to study abroad. My father said, no, you are staying here. I wanted to start my own business. He said, no, you work here. Also, I wanted to have my profession in the art industry. And he said, show business is a dirty business, whatever it is. So I end up in the business school and uh, so on and so on but it's so important like my first trainer in dancing she said very important words that I still have in my head your life should look like a flower that consists of many 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 petals if you notice there are some people who always say you ask them how are you and they say 
nothing special is going on. It's just home, work, work home. But your life is not just home. Your life is not just family. Your life is not just work. Your life just consists of these multiple paddles. That is one can be family. Another is your work. Third one can be your hobby, your friends, your social life. Maybe it's charity. So picking up different areas, it creates a flower. This kind of life where in the center is you. So by defining what you really, who you really are, the center of this flower, you start to asking yourself right questions. What do you really like to have in your life? Do you want family? Do you want to get married? Do you want to have kids? How many kids, for example? If you want to work, what kind of work? Is it corporate job? Is it business? And so on. Slowly creating this life as a flower. But it's you. It's nobody that is possessing on you kind of expectations or what you're supposed to do, what they expect from you. I spent lots of years of my life trying to meet somebody else's expectations, self-proof myself, first of all, to myself and then to others. But this is the trap. This is the trap that put your inner champion in a prison. So that's why I would like to share some tools today that will really maybe help you to unleash this champion and if you want to learn more you can get this book it has uh, like uh, it's an ebook version or hard copy as you wish so i sh i told before that uh it's everything is in your head in your heart and in your hands but when we start something it starts from the solid foundation so this is another key foundation what does it mean when in sport uh like i had before i become a world champion i had a five years break because i fell down in a very very long many years lasting depression after i lost my family after i failed my first marriage and for asian women it's a disaster it's the end of the world and living in this there is always a choice. So this was a turning point when I could fall down and just end this life. Or I make a decision to rise and really live the way I supposed to live. And as you see, because we are sitting all together, you know what was the choice. The choice was one day I just look at myself and talk to myself life continues. I was granted, I don't know how many days, but there is a reason why I am here. So what are, what are my biggest goal? What is my biggest passion? What kind of resources I have? And how can I achieve this goal? At this point, I, like, I don't know if anybody of you was facing depression or facing this kind of inner anxiety. My recipe to get out of this is to set a very huge, huge goal. So talking about foundation, it's a vision. Vision of your life, vision of your business, vision of your corporate job. How do you see yourself in the future? And then the next step will be to evaluate what kind of resources and abilities you have, or what do you need for that? What do you need to learn what kind of your people you need in your team, if we talk about business, but also about the corporate job. And the third important element is, of course, action. So at some point, I decided that I have such a burning desire to come back after five years break to the sport, the big sport. Of course, it's scary, especially when a lot of people, maybe you're familiar with that, when you start a new business or you decide to go um, and take another job, and people say, you are crazy, why are you doing this, stay here, because they feel comfortable next to you, because they feel like, wow, if you are growing, maybe you will be disconnected, or they feel not good about themselves, feel, seeing that you want to grow, and they actually want to be in this comfort zone. So at some point, I made a decision, if I want to go and back in the big sport and achieve my goal, become a national champion, I can't stay here at the same place. So I moved from Asia to Europe. First, I moved in South Korea. 
I didn't find opportunities to grow in the direction I want, so I left South Korea. I moved in Europe. I lived in Poland for a while, then I, I moved to in Germany. And I know it's crazy because some people was like, Jesus, what are you doing? Uh, you are everywhere. You need to learn language, how you're going to make money. How is this? How is that? I give you just like a couple of months and you will be back. But if you make a decision, and if you stick to your vision, if you are really believe in your like passion as well, nothing can stop you. I, I'm actually also <laughs> reading your comments. Thank you very much, Asli, and hi, Jinky. If you have this burning desire, your passion is your fuel and nothing can stop you. So I moved in Europe and uh, things started to change so fast, so incredibly fast that I, besides just becoming a national champion, I became a world champion. And people say, wow, maybe it's a luck. How is it possible that just after one and a half year, you became a world champion? But people don't take into account one thing. It was not this one and a half year. Like sometimes maybe you see adver business advertising or join our company and in a couple of months you will become a millionaire. I will tell you in advance, it's coming. Because if we take uh, my example with the sport, it's not one and a half years. People didn't take into consideration that before I started to dance, like when I was 12 years old, and I was investing over 10 years, more than 10 years in building up my foundation that in sport we call technique. It's when you come in the training hall and you do again and again and again the same exercise the same um just just maybe one step it's annoying it's painful it's irritating but you do it again and again and again the same in business sometimes you work some so hard on something and you have huge expectations like okay 2020 i'm expecting to earn this amount of money and then corona happens Had to close the business some people lost the job why because there was no a solid foundation for that probably yes there are things that we can't control but we can decide to focus on things that we can control like we can control our health and day by day fool our body with the right things we can choose success in the long term and day by day taking part maybe in such virtual events or read or listen to something really empowering, learning new things, even small things every single day. It's a choice to fool our mind. Talking about emotions, women are super, we know, right? We are, can be super emotional. We make decisions based on emotions sometimes, but that's how we can train ourselves to make decisions based not on the emotion. It can be based on the gut feeling, and sometimes this is the best decisions. But also maybe to learn new skills, like numbers, like PNL, your profit and loss, evaluate each project. This is your foundation. Talking about my business, this year we also were hurt because all events were canceled. I was about to learn launch this business in seven different countries, traveling and speaking and doing like signing stuff. It didn't happen. And like realistically, I supposed to close my business. But instead of this, we just fully changed the business model behind. We built up team and we just launched the digital platform. We created new events. We did just virtual summit recently that's supposed to be live summit. There are always ways. There are always plans B if you plan, right? There is always opportunities that you can create for yourself. But you have to have this foundation. The part of foundation, if we talk about, doesn't matter what, it can be sports, it can be business, it can be relationships, anything in life starts from the values. It's also, as I told already, it's your vision and it's your self-confidence. Self-confidence and self-belief. Well, number one, business without the vision is just fight for money. Don't you agree? 
It's like every day you just fight and go forward for money. And there is a chance 50-50, you can get what you want or you can fail. And when you fail, you will be just broken, broken financially, broken hearted and on so many levels. But if you have this vision, no matter what is happening in your life, you just anyway move forward. You find the reason why you have to take the next step. And I, uh, in a way, joke, but it's true. Learn how to fail with pleasure. Because a lot of people say, oh, success is something that can come like this. No, it's not. Most of the time it's fail, 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 small, tiny success. Fail, 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 success. And then it starts again. When you learn to fail with pleasure, meaning something happened, and yes, you feel bad about this. You can spend five minutes, 10 minutes, give yourself time to grieve, but then put yourself together and say, okay, what actually worked and what I get from this? What didn't work and what I can do better? You know that the world championship is only once per year. And if you're not able to, be, to win it, you have to work another 365 days and try again. However, in business, if today you failed, you have some, you have the next day, hopefully, right? To make different decisions, to optimize your message, or maybe to improve your marketing, to go through your operations, evaluate your finances. There are a lot of tools you can use in order to refool yourself and start another day and try again. So learn, I, it took me so many years to learn this important thing to enjoy the process. That's why I'm talking about failing with the pleasure. And uh, moving forward, if we're talking about the business owner, because it's not just about fixing the business sometimes. Sometimes what you really need to do is to fix business owner. Business owner without values. I'm sorry for telling this, but it's really, a loser in a way who choose to be, be one. Why? I met so many, many successful people in a way, if people perceive them successful because we live in a world where success are measured by two things, amount of money and power you have. And these people were really successful based on this definition because they had a lot of money. They were multimillionaires. And yes, they had power because they had connections with uh, really powerful people. And that's why a lot of people wanted to be around them. But how they earn money is another question. You know that there are a lot of scamming companies nowadays in the virtual world. There are tons of them. Why I'm calling the losers? Because we talk, we covered a bit of body. We covered a bit of uh, like mindset, emotions about the if you believe in the spiritual world, you know that we're here for a while. And some people unfortunately live in a way that they think that they will live forever. But in reality, we are giving this opportunity to come into this world, realize our potential or unleash our inner champion and do it in a way that we actually grow. We grow as a human being, but also we grow as a spirit. As soon as we decide to earn or to be successful using somebody else, we can be successful in this lifetime, maybe 60 years, maybe 70, maybe even 100 years. But if to talk the unlimited, how many of you, by the way, agree, you can comment that we actually unlimited. Our spirit is just like endless as a universe, right? So thank you for your comments. Consistency is a key, yes, exactly, and patience. This is the part of the foundation. So yeah, somebody's writing, agree. Yes, we are as a spirit, we are unlimited. And this life that we live nowadays is just a small, small portion. It's like tiny, tiny event. And when we 
decide to succeed, make take take responsibility for our life, unleash our potential, and serve people, serve the mission that we have, but in a great way, not scamming people, not activate this law of reflection like a bad karma. We are succeeding. But there are people who make different decisions. That's why I call you just, you may be succeeded in this life, but you lose when we talk about this life again. Because you were given the way to learn your lessons and you didn't take the time, you didn't take this opportunity to, er to, to learn these lessons. And you have to maybe come back again and learn them again. Plus, you earn the karma. That's how it works in reality. And that's why when something happens in our life, People always ask this question, but I'm so great person. Why did it happen to me? Maybe because of your previous actions, maybe something that you were as a spirit doing in the previous lives. That can be the outcomes. That's why when you really now maybe planning to start your own business or your business is already like, functioning, it's growing, and you want to take the next step, or maybe you're really enjoying the corporate world and you want to build a solid career. Take time to really build up your foundation. Go through your values, go through your real vision. What do you want to get at the end? And build up a reverse engineering. Probably this one of the tools uh, that I'm actually sharing step by step here, how you can do that. And uh, this is one of the exercises that I want to do after this call. Maybe for the next year, you know, some people planning the next year in December or even in January, but it's too late. It's too late. The time when you have to start working on your goals for the next year, it's already was yesterday. If you didn't start doing this, start today. Draw this vision for the next year. What do you really want for your personal life, for your business, for any area? Remember in the beginning I told about the flower. If you don't have flower, then draw this flower for yourself. What are these important areas of your life? Build these goals for each area and start reverse engineering. The questions you should ask yourself, what do I need? Whom do I need? You go to this even virtual events and you have the opportunity to connect with people. They, there are so many talents. Just connect really, spend time. Uh, maybe have another virtual meetings and virtual coffee and figure out how you can build up this team, how you can collaborate with somebody. What do you need? Were they skills? Do you need to learn something? Do you need to hire a coach? Do you want to have a mentorship? Maybe to join any kind of uh, community? What do you need for this? Write this down. And then you can build up a strategic plan. Action A, action B, action C. And I know that a lot of women, we are still, we have, the thing is that we have it in our DNA. We have it in our DNA, all these limiting beliefs that we inherited. The behavior, the attitude to money. Sometimes people say, I have a blockage to talk about the money. That's fine. Accept this. We all have it. Because maybe our grand-grandmothers had it. And we do have a DNA. But we also have in DNA another important part. It calls freedom. It's something that we have as a birthright to be free, to make choices for ourselves, to make choices that make us happy, to make choices that bring us joy, to make choices that empower us. That's why it's all in our hands. What kind of future we want to build for ourselves. So tune in in this DNA. Tune in and connect with this inner champion. And if you want to have a guide, because here's a lot of exercises as well. You can get this book electronically, hard copy, or just reach out if you want to talk after this conversation and we just can um, have 
another virtual coffee, but never give up on yourself. Because the last part I also wanted to talk about, and then Cardella, maybe we turn to questions and answers. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody will. Sometimes I hear so many stories, people say, my parents never believed in me, my friends brings me down, my neighbors are this and that. Well, why do you choose to be in this environment? Our family is given and friends are given for a reason, that we grow. Sometimes you can fix, I fixed my relationships with my mother after her death. Yes, it's possible. Sometimes you, you choose your friends and your surrounding, your business partners, your colleagues. It's in your control. So despite of the crisis that we have nowadays, we can't control what kind of decisions governments will take, what kind of decisions will be like the local regulations, what is going on with this world. But there are specific things that we can control. We can control our choices to be healthy, to be always positive, to connect with the right people. We take under control our thoughts, what we want to like menu for our thoughts. We don't have only menu for our body, but also menu for our thoughts. What we want to focus on. Do I want to read the news about all this way? Oh my gosh, Trump was like, something happened with him. This is elections, how is it going on? Or I'm just switch on the YouTube video. Maybe that is where like successful women share their successful like recipes. Or I listen another important and very interesting podcasts. Or maybe I go to, go to the virtual meeting and connect with amazing women. It's up to you, right? The same with your spirit. If you want to nurture your spirit and make it stronger, it's also your decision. So I really invite you to take, to focus on things that you can control. And then you will find yourself in no complaining, no blaming, no victim environment and feeling anymore. So if you have any questions about that, you're welcome to ask your business, in your life, in whatever kind of situation. We have an opportunity to answer, maybe give some tools, whatever you want. Talking Hi. about, yeah. Taz is asking, talking about pos positivity and passion, do you give credit to your sportsmanship? Uh, I do give a credit, the fact that I'm in sport. I do give a credit that I am a dancer. And to be honest, uh, you have to be careful in whom you invest, talking about coaches, talking about mentors. Uh, there was a time when I met somebody, one uh, person who called himself a coach and told, you know what? Dan never, never position yourself as a sportsman, never position yourself as a dancer. Who wants to do business with a dancer? In reality, it's true. But for example, I, I told you about the foundation. I told you about the values. And part of this for me is authenticity. And part of me is accepting that yes, yes dancing and sport and being me a woman in sport and being me in this kind of relationships, it is part of me. This is truth and this is the authentical. Another question, what kind of people want to do business? Well, you know, it depends how you position this. Because if uh, I think high ethics, high achievers, they have specific traits inside of themselves that help them achieve successes also in business, also in other areas of their lives. But when you, if you have any kind of success, with it's tiny, with it's huge success, own it and be proud of it. It's part of your self-belief. When you accomplish some way, did I talk, talk about actions? When you want to achieve something and you are like sitting and uh, waiting, when is the perfect time? Oh, I will wait when Corona will be like, come to end. Well, you don't know when it comes to end. Exactly. Start taking actions now. Even if it's like tiny, tiny, connect with another person. Maybe you feel uncomfortable to connect with a stranger. Do it anyway. Yeah. 
in fact do it because when you will do it you will feel wow i actually can do this wow i had a great time and it gives you self-belief and self-confidence mm -hmm. step by step you're building this this is Murphy at beach okay. i don't know if i answered your question <laughs> if, if you want to ask me precisely then you just can ask and mute yourself. Any other questions? <laughs> yeah, any other questions, ladies? You can turn on your camera, ladies. Have a cup of coffee with us. You grow like this. Uh, well, uh, I grow like, well, you know, we're not born as champions, we're not born as sportsmen, we're not born as businesswomen or leaders. We chose to be like that, right? It's a decision to say, okay, I want to develop myself in this or that area. And step by step, you build yourself up. It's not that you grow with this or grow with that. In fact, uh, talking about my physical abilities, I was always said that I'm weak. I don't have enough power and have energy. And instead of sitting and being poor about myself, like I, I'm not like super athletic person, <laughs> but instead of this, I spend much longer time in the hole, like training sometimes from eight to 10 hours per day, every day, seven days per week. I also went to the gym. I went to the stretch. It's not that you are giving some things in life. Some, sometimes you have to hard work, work hard. Sometimes you need to work smart. It depends what you want. Mm -hmm. I really like the way when you say that, you know, um, uh, you have to do it now. You, you don't have to wait, you know, because um, we are in the time of pandemic. A lot of people are just, you know, resting and doing nothing. But um, yes, um, doing little things each time can make a real big difference, maybe for you and for the other people as well, for your own family. Well, you know, we were said uh, that, oh, we have lockdown just like for three months, then it was prolonged. And now uh, it's like we had uh, 300 cases, now it's uh, over 2000 every day, meaning we're not going in the like best direction at this moment meaning that people who were sitting on the sofa the, the first three months of lockdown, it didn't really bring them further, while other people were doing something to strengthen their abilities, their knowledge, maybe starting new business, maybe pivoting from something like to in completely new way and direction. The same in sport, I say, you know, while you are taking rest, your rival is training. And this is like the thing is um, the difference between one time winners and the champions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people win, they succeed and they relax. Oh, and you know, uh, they put crown on their head and say, well, look at me, I'm a champion. Look at me, I'm successful. Look at me, I'm a like multimillionaire. And they stop developing and they stop growing while other people are developing enough to be adaptable very fast to a new realities, to a new market. They grow and they go global, for example, and they build up the strength step by step. And when times changes, something happened, like what we experience is now, the one-time winners, they just fell down from their throne. And people who were not visible, they grow. Why? Because they are working on specific level of success, working on their goals every single day. And that's why talking about specifically, if you are not happy with your job now, what is your job of your dreams? People sometimes look at me and say, it's not real. It is real. Even if you do some like uh, job that you are not enjoying, but you need to, to pay bills, continue doing this. But draw for yourself what kind of job you want to have. Do you want to be CEO? Do you want to, or do you want to own your own company? What is your dream job? And take action in terms of small steps. Maybe you want to work in specific company. 
And sometimes company uh, have open days or they looking for volunteers. They create different projects. Just show up, show mm -hmm. yourself, show your skills. If you don't have enough skills, invest in the skill, develop this. The same with business. If you want to go like start your business, I don't know, in uh, fashion or in tech, fintech, what, whatever industry you want, pick this up and figure out what is missing part. And, there's, uh, another, yeah. there's another question here for you, Valerie. Um, can you tell the amount of time you invest in making you grow like this? Grow means professionally. <laughs> I think you were, as I told you, um, one and a half years took me, right, to become world champion after the five years break. That's meaning starting from scratch. But in reality, it was the whole life, right, before from being, uh, I don't know, it was over 10 years to develop specific techniques, to develop this foundation. Because you see, um, we became world champions in a team. So there is like, we are performing as a couple, but we're also performing as a team. And there was like 10 of girls on one spot who will be representing the team, or who will be representing the whole country. It's a lot of responsibility, right? And it's a lot about the trainer, who will, who will he pick up? The same if you are on the job market, how employer should pick up you, right? It's not that you like overnight became successful. Sometimes you need to invest. It takes months, sometimes it takes years to develop specific level of abilities, but sometimes it's not even about the abilities. It's about your self-confidence. And uh, sometimes it's about to know what is you all about. Because what, what do I mean with this? I Like imagine I came in Germany, I don't speak German language. I don't know any, I don't have friends. I just figuring out everything. I come to this team that were already like world champions in the past there was this famous trainer and me myself from i don't know wherever not speaking language who you are but by training and working with this trainer maybe he saw this kind of foundation in me this technique that's why he picked first of all allowed me to be part of this team and then picked me up to represent the country on the world championship but before this once um you know, there are some people who are like, when they grow, they are becoming very important people and they look at you like from above. And there was time when I needed help to like learn steps, learn new things. I came to people and said, can you help me? Because I don't understand how it works. And they said, I don't have time because who you are that I need to spend my time on you. And that was the every single day that I was facing with this kind of attitude. But first of all, I came to this country because I was following my passion. I got married. I moved. I started to live together with my husband. And second thing, I really wanted to grow as professional athlete. And this was one of the greatest uh, school where I can learn. And it was secondary for me to be part of this team. That's why one day I came to the trainer, to the coach, main coach, and said, you know what? I don't want to be part of your team. Like a lot of girls, they are fighting to be part of this. And I just, nobody for him came and said, sorry, I don't want to be part of this because people are, and excuse me, ladies, assholes in this <laughs> What kind of values do you have? Why do you treat people like a shit? It was shocking for him, probably. And this maybe was the reason he wanted me to be part of this team. And even after this conversation, I was part of this team. As a result, I, I did become a world champion because we were still working together. So when you raise this kind of self-confidence in yourself, that, okay, if I don't know this today, I will learn and will know it tomorrow. But I know that I deserve this. You just go there and own it. Just, you can't say how, how long you need, <laughs> how many months you need to create this kind of core 
or to be able to unleash this in a champion or years or maybe days maybe tomorrow you <laughs> wake up and say look at the mirror and say you know what enough of this settling down for small things settling down for small salary i'm starting to build my future today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's another question here for you uh, which country were you representing when you became a uh, world champion i was representing germany mm. okay. i'm but i'm actually a citizen of germany <laughs> <laughs> Who are living in Dubai and who now is in Poland, but you know sometimes people asking why you left Germany, why you left uh, Dubai, and I always say you know uh, people always create an image for themselves what success means to them or what society perceives successful, but you have to follow your heart and create the life based on your own happiness, based on your own definition of success. If you are happy in this specific place be there or find the way how to be there don't yeah. listen because if you say oh it's so amazing to live i don't know in california sipping this kind of drink every morning and but you feel not happy at all why do you do that um i think i don't i don't um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> yes hi valerie it's been wonderful hi. listening to you uh, what do you think has been your inner strength, which, you know, has kept you going again and again and again? I know you believe, you said you believe a lot in yourself, but there's, what's that uh, inner strength that's kept you through so many failures, so many rejections and, you know, various things that you've mentioned? Well, uh, of course, I, I say <clears throat> it depends on the environment where you were born also and when where you were growing up and what was what kind of mindset and it's not that I was believing in myself the whole my life from the birth in reality it was vice versa but I think one thing is that I always open for learning uh, open for learning meaning you know if people don't grow and don't open to learn they will never go through this mind freaks <laughs> or limiting beliefs that you have like if people the whole life was telling me something that you I'm not capable about this, not capable about that, that, that and you're not self-confident naturally, you will never become if you are not open to learn the new tools, to learn the truth. Because sometimes people come and say, I'm ready to learn and they're like this, I know the best. I'm, I'm, I think the chance is that I think I'm, I'm never the best. There is always the level where you can grow. Even if you're a champion, there is always the way to uh, become even better. If, even if you achieved in your business specific amount of money of the cash flow, there is always more you can earn. Or you bring value to people, there is always more ways how you can just, just ask them what do they need. And I think another, th another thing is just I'm really probably goal oriented. But it, you have to be careful with that <laughs> because, um, you know, sometimes you set crazy goal that is the, in your head, in your fantasy, <laughs> and you say, in one year, I will be in spaceship, you know, owning the spaceship. Think Why big. <laughs> yeah, like, well, here, think huge. And in, it's, it's December 2021, and I'm still sitting on my chair, and I'm on the spaceship. And some people will feel like, gosh, I'm so bad. <laughs> you know, they will feel bad about themselves. Of course, it's like I'm exaggerating with the example, but sometimes people like this, they put themselves down. Uh, have this big goal and focus on this goal, but be realistic with the time frame and split this in a small goals that you can actually achieve. This First of all, it empowers you. You will feel like you move forward, like step by step. And when you have this big vision, as I told, you have the power to manifest. Sometimes we do manifest the right people who can help us to go actually a little bit faster. Or we get an opportunities to go faster. But don't expect this to happen immediately. 
don't have this huge expectations and really don't have any expectations. Just do your job and focus on your big goal. This will bring you further. Great, thank you. I have to leave ladies. So thank you very much, Cardella. Thank you, thank for, you Larry. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you very much, bye. Um, is there anyone who wants to ask some more question? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, for me, I want to ask you a question. What type of challenges you really face when dealing with um, with uh, women empowerment and how how do you cope up with um, what you call sometimes because women women are lovely but sometimes it's hard <laughs> to <laughs> you know what I mean but yeah how how can how do you cope up with that well, I think the biggest challenge for me was actually make a decision to work with women because until a particular age, I could not deal with women at all. And I talk about this <laughs> during the summit. You heard I had um, a lot of issues with my mother uh, till maybe high school. And when you have issues with your mom, meaning it's not really allowing you to accept your feminine part and be open to communicate with the same gender. So basically for me with women, if you have challenges with dad, that may be one of the reasons you have challenges with the relationships with, with, with men. So for me, this was one of the first challenge to first of all, find, reconnect with this feminine part of me. And this happened uh, during the first pregnancy and after delivering the first baby, when I faced all these challenges that my mother went through, all women <laughs> in this world who choose to become parents facing, and then I realized, gosh, we need support, crazy support, because the whole life is falling apart. Excuse me, I was traveling the world and was doing what I really love to do. And nowadays I have to sit at home, taking care about small baby. Yes, I love this baby, but I have no idea why she's crying all this time, what she needs. And when I started particularly the business, being the mom, I was very often faced with discrimination mm -hmm. when you come and it came not only from men sometimes it also came from women who were telling you are just a mom oh what mommy wants and uh, last year i was organizing an event in dubai i was going to this uh, networking events and uh, i was pregnant i was in seventh month uh, when we had our event and I was also with the toddler sometimes together when Nanny couldn't come or my husband was always busy. So I had to take her because I had commitment to meet people or to go to a specific event. Pregnant, with kids, going there and it's like, oh, doing business, big business. And some people was like, what the heck you're doing here? Like, you know, go and chill, mama. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but that's kind of reality sometimes you face. And that's why I tell you, if you don't have self-belief, you will be bringing down for sure. But the biggest enemy for you is yourself. Whether you believe in what people say or you're this inner voice, small little voice tells you can't, mm -hmm. or you are just the mom, or you are just the housewife, or you're just whatever. Yeah. You will believe. Cool. I think talking about the values, that's what I learned um, like recently. I mean, my passion is numbers, but I learned very, very like recently, a very important truth. If I don't know how many business owners here, but also if you have a job, it's important. Uh, it's connected with the self-worth of women, meaning that uh, we never value our um input and our time mm -hmm. so we always we, let's say we have a project we're doing project together and we're doing calculations what is the revenues coming from what are expenses do you have in the expenses section time how much time how much hours do you invest in this the question mark why we never 
put this into account? What is our time cost? Of course, we don't sell time, but sometimes maybe this project is not profitable for you because you it's too many efforts. Maybe you have to do something different. And it's a lot have to do with the self-worth. Mm. So this is one of the challenges is self-worth challenge. Yeah. Uh, how did you get out of those little uh, voices in your head? <laughs> That's, uh, you know, a lot of people would say you're not worth to do this or you're, you're, you're doing that, uh, you're not doing the right thing. How did you get out of it? I mean, for me, I know I, I, it's just for, for probably the attendees. Really because no? <laughs> us, uh, us be, um, you and me, we, we have a, um, a platform that we call. So uh, for me, I will never stop even with these little things that comes to my mind. But yeah, for, for the sake of the attendees, what do you do? I think, as you said, this little voices will never get out of our head. <laughs> this point of the ego, the goal of the ego is protect us, protect us. It's, it's normally right to survive, to live further, to protect from the danger. That's what the function. And when you try to go from this comfort zone, it always stops you. Or when you're about to make the next breakthrough, it does not really sound for ego to be like solid, to be safe. That's why it starts to fool you like, oh, you don't worth this. Mm -hmm. Why do you need to spend time? It's not great things to do. <laughs> if you mm -hmm. add on it's top of this, um, the it's more exactly successful you become, Close what you don't need. the more people you will face who will tell you like so a lot of truth about yourself that you never even thought that you were like have it or you are doing this. Sometimes they invent things. So there will be always this little voices, always people who are not really supporting you. But as you said, if you, it's about vision, right? Yeah. Sometimes I yeah. also question myself, if I should continue doing this, am I on the right path? It's normal to have this kind of yeah. moment of self-doubt. But the, the interesting thing is always when I'm asking myself, I receive messages or I receive feedback. I don't ask for this, but it comes. And for me, it's like a sign. Yes, I'm doing something good. Maybe I'm on the right path because look at this. That's why I work. <laughs> so just if you have this vision, it's like if you go to the job, and if you say, oh, I'm just doing accounting, I'm just dealing with the numbers to provide my employer with the income statement at the end of the month and year, probably is this. And your little words will, will tell you, this is your, that's all. But if you will think about this a bit different, that actually without these numbers, the business is not able to function you can't move forward without evaluating your numbers and your role is a key in the company. You will have completely different motivation to go to the job. You will have completely different vision for your career and it will give you power maybe to start your own accounting company. I think Sally wants to ask a question. Sally? Me? Why? Hi. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, somebody asked no, me just how much listening. Uh, I like to listen to you. Yeah, very interesting conversation. And it's true about your little. Sometimes you stop from doing things because um, they say, "Why are you doing this?" or "Why?" or "Are you sure about this?" or, or "Why do you have to go there?" or "Why?" You know, they stop you from doing things or from saying things. And sometimes you take them into consideration and you, I, I think you shouldn't so much. You shouldn't listen to these small voices so much. True. Very true. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, the, the, like, why we, when I started the Women Empowerment Platform, and uh, it's also somebody asked about how long you stay with mentors, coaches, so I will <laughs> try to combine these two things uh, just to save time for everybody. It's like when we started uh, Independent Women, for example, it was the focus was to help women become financially free because it's important. Many times in my life I was in situations when it was a great thing that I had a passive income stream. 
because I could not function, whether health-wise, whether mentally-wise, whatever it is. So that's why this was my vision to provide women with these tools, to teach them investment or creating business based on this income, passive income streams. But the thing is, you, you can give whatever tools. And if the person is not ready mentally or spiritually, it's not, nothing will happen. I so believe we're so much connected to somebody else's opinion. Oh my gosh, my neighbor, my neighbor said, this is so weird to do. Mm. If you're dependable, dependent emotionally, or you dependent um, mentally on something and spiritually, like you're disconnected with yourself, you can't move forward and you will be just serving your ego instead of taking ego as your saving um, tool. Yeah. and use it right so as you said sometimes we have these doubts yes we have these doubts but this that's the thing learning every day the or not every day but just learning and rediscovering your own self your own body your own mind what empowers you mm -hmm. what kind of exercises and tools sometimes people oh keto diet let's do everybody or oh, wild feet everybody has to do this but maybe your body needs specific elements that this diet or whatever is not working. Some tools can work for you. Some tools will not work for you. You have to experiment. That's why yeah. we need to take actions. Try. And uh, Tas asked about how long, how, how much do you stay connected with mentors and coaches and it matters. It is matters because the simple, simple thing, you, we create sometimes complete mess from our life. And we create this with this mind, with this heart, and with this hands. Mm. So how in this world you're going to get out of this if you have the same mind, the same heart, and the same hands? That's why you do need coaches and you do have do need mentors like Every single day as an as a athlete, we worked with coaches and trainers every single day. Hmm. Sometimes we tried this coach, this trainer, this coach. It worked. Some didn't work. So you, you stop. It starts from the trial. Just like some coaches book free. In the sport, it's never free. <laughs> but in business, for example, some mentors and business coaches, they offer you free uh, consultation. Take it. It can be 30 minutes, it can be one hour and see if it's the same vibe, if you're on the same page, if you understand. And if it works for you, just like engage, like sign up for the whatever coaching you need. Me personally, every single week, I have a call with my coaches because it's important for me to check if I'm on the right direction or if I feel a complete mess. I know I'm accountable to few people who are like keeping me yeah that's true forward. i in addition to that i also believe that you know um having a mentor um for business and personal is always very uh essential very important and then having a friend like for example you and me will talk about something in virtually or you know by by whatsapp is uh, very important as well because we exchange knowledge and we get knowledge from the people who are more um, knowledgeable from us and then for both of you and then it's important also to impart that knowledge to someone and I think that's uh, that this that's the circle of life is there anyone else wants to uh, add question It was so nice to hear all of this, and especially because I, uh, both you and uh, Valerie, are uh, my guides, coaches, mentors. Uh, I don't know how you call it, friends, friends and uh, coaches, how you call it, because I am uh, on the road for a better version of mine through the platform, which I call karma. I created, I call to myself. So basically, what attracted me about Valerie was uh, this long uh, submit we had and she is the champion, she's got book, this and that. And then all of a sudden I said to myself, what is the, okay, here is Valerie, here is me and what is the common point? 
So all the common points we have, the, the challenges, the struggles as a woman, because many things are so common. And the part that I consumed to myself was how a champion deals with it. Okay, and I said, okay, she does this, I does this, and then I took some common points. And this was the moment that I understood it's always good to hear an achieved goal and uh, an inspiration from someone who has walked the hard path. Because no need to go on the same road, falling and slowing down. A tip can save you, you know, if somebody says, look, watch out, there's a hole there, you don't step it. So, and the thing that I recognized is uh, I, you cannot save a soul that doesn't want to be saved. Mm -hmm. So it is that moment that you really want to save yourself. So reach out the hand. No matter how much hand is uh, given to you, if you don't want to keep it, you don't take it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't have to become a Cardella or Valerie, but you can uh, make an independent makeup and become still a well-touched yourself. So that's what I like. And uh, to be honest, Tuesdays and Thursdays and uh, the other times I can always ask questions to you professionally is very valuable to me. And... Uh, you know, all the things I was doing, I am not extending anymore. So there is no more tomorrow. There's always the day. So we, all day grow, we all grow together, Ashley. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> such, a, such, a, such a big a pleasure to be in the same karma with people like you. So it's, it's, it's just uh, nice and impressive. Thank you. Beautiful said. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mm, anyone else wants to um, say something or ask question? Take the opportunity while Valerie is still there. And you can always um, reach Valerie. Can you tell us where we can reach you, where they can reach you um, on a one-on-one? Yeah, sure. one -on -one? <laughs> I'm on Facebook, I'm in LinkedIn, like you can reach out to me anytime. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. I don't know, share the link. I find you in Facebook, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Simona. How's Frankfurt today? Is it cold? <laughs> Cold. Hi everyone. It is very cold, yes. That's why I say to Valerie that Dubai is a, compared to Frankfurt, this is the better choice. <laughs> First time because of weather. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it depends what you like. Like, I can't uh, yeah. deal like when it's super hot. <laughs> and I like when it's like four seasons changing uh, like every three months. I love the beauty of every season. That's why. I'm also here at this moment, <laughs> but also Dubai has its own beauty, like it's warm, it's, there are so many activities that you can have, so yeah. Cooling down, yeah. Nice. To, to us okay. it's uh, a little bit normal, back to normal, let's say that uh, I am, uh, I work from home, that it, I, for me it was not so much affected. But I have friends which are incorporated and uh, they was at home and it was not funny for many of them. And uh, it's, uh, now step by step they go, they go back to normal uh, three days per week. For example, they go back in office and it's a, a little bit better now. Mm. But no, it's cold. It's cold uh, compared to other years. It's not so cold. Mm. And uh, the beauty of the of the nature now is is amazing. <laughs> I like it. It's cold, but I I not complain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to to uh, that you sent me the link, Cardella, for join with you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So I leave the other ladies to, to talk. Yeah. Thanks. See you. Okay. 
Is there any Thank other uh, people who wants to ask question? Hi, Valerie. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Lovely to meet you. Thank you, Myra. So I think we'll end up to thing. Yeah, Valerie, you want to talk? Uh, you want to add some more things? No, I'm very happy to connect with everyone. I posted the link in LinkedIn. Just reach out if you feel like you want to reach out. <laughs> if you have any questions that you want to ask after the session, or if you want to get the book, for example. So did I, did I win that book in your summit? Uh, yes, and I asked to give me your address that you did not really give me address. So how to get that? In, in your yeah. summit, I remember you. I, I won that. I said, I'm going to give, I'm yeah, going to send it to people. I sent it to two people, so they give me your address. I sent you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if um, anyone wants to, um, to reach to you. Do you have any more virtual uh, events that you can share us? Then just always post it in LinkedIn. Yeah, so you can find uh, Independent Women World in LinkedIn, in Facebook and in Instagram. We start our Independent Women Talks. Uh, as I mentioned, <laughs> Tuesdays mornings and also Thursdays. We do every Thursday a virtual events. It's Independent Women Talks. When we are together with ladies discussing but different topics related to independent women. So you are welcome. You are invited. Also, we do monthly masterclasses with the world uh, top coaches. Uh, this, I think if somebody attended the summit, you met Rose Chastain. She's a world business coach. She's amazing also in women empowerment. Like we have a masterclass with her this month. Uh, the LinkedIn one was also a masterclass, right, uh, Valerie? If I remember right, it was. Sorry? It was also the uh, two weeks ago. One was also a masterclass. The LinkedIn and uh, it was. It was also a masterclass that we have attended, right? Yeah, with all of our women. Yeah, with I never. Of so <laughs> we were learning. We were learning about LinkedIn. So this was one of the masterclasses. Yeah. 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 All right. We have one to next week, uh, the, the following week uh, about LinkedIn. Well, um, if uh, no one wants to ask more questions, then... Um, I do you... have... Ah, okay. Right. Please Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so, Jinky um, invited me in to join this group. So, I want to know more. What is the purpose of this group? And is this a frequent uh, meeting online? Um, I really wanted to know deeper. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Um, me, myself, I have my own platform, which is International Women Entrepreneur Society. Uh, we do have virtual talks every Tuesday. And, uh, and we are going to have a live event on December 8th and 9th. For Valerie, gotcha. uh, Valerie, please share your virtual talks as well. Hi, Valerie. Hi. <laughs> yeah, um, I'd like, um, uh, I'd like to have like, um, if you can please share the link, um, so I can follow through and I can join, um, uh, that activity in December, please. And uh, what about you, Valerie? <laughs> I think, uh, uh Valerie, Valerie, I think Myra had uh, joined a bit late. That's why she she missed a lot of things. But yeah, please share. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So I shared the link. You can join. It's like also weekly talks. You can be part of this. And then, but now it's a link. The link was not a link. Now it's a link. Or you can just like explore, have uh, just, there are different categories, so. But thank you, Cardella, for inviting, for creating this beautiful uh, session. And, uh, okay. can, can, we, can we hear something from, before we, before, before we leave, can we hear something about, from Shola? Hi, Shola. 
You're in Hi. anyway. Hi. Everybody there? <laughs> Hi. Um, it's quite noisy here for me. I'm sorry. That's why I'm not really, you know, up. My little one is a bit disturbing, yeah. but I'm listening to everything. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> All right, then. We know this kind of challenges nowadays. <laughs> well <laughs> done, guys. You. Well done. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Cordella, for Thank organizing you. beautiful events. I also attend when I have an opportunity your great um, sessions every Tuesday. So thank you very much. Thank you, too. Nice right. to see you all. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you for thank tuning you. in. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 Bye.